I found it on Rayma Radio. Hi friends, weekly 20 minute sermon is now released every Wednesday and it's called the Midweek Service. This week's sermon is from Pastor Chris Kam of Damansara Otama Methodist Church entitled Core Habits Tree. Be real. Look out for that. And now for this week's interview. This is Ray Poon speaking on Rayma Radio, your weekly podcast of faith, culture, music, and more. Today we have a really exciting a man of God is with us, Reverend Raymond Mui, who is the principal of the School of Acts, the president of Life College, and the senior pastor of He is Sovereign Church, also known as His Church. He has been in the pastoral ministry for over 35 years and ministers as an international evangelist in Asia and throughout the world as well. He has successfully broken open many cities in Asia for miracle rallies on open fields in huge stadiums where God's great love and compassion has been demonstrated through tremendous healings and miracles, bringing large numbers into the kingdom of God. As a voice to the body of Christ, he proclaims a clear, strong message from God, calling on Christians to break out of their limitations and have God's faith for breakthroughs on every front. He yearns for God's people to love, serve, and live together in one accord, serving the course of Holy Spirit revival. Welcome, Reverend Raymond. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here with you. We are really excited to hear what God has um, put in your heart. Amen. And um, let's perhaps start from there. Where and how has God brought about um, His direction and His gift to what you're doing today? The Bible uh, tells us that... um, God has given to us the fivefold ministry gifts, and that's uh, included in there is the gift of uh, an evangelist. And I am so thankful to God that uh, in the early years of journeying with the Lord and God uh, doing a work in my life to prepare me for what He has in store for me in the future, uh, I come to realize that this is a strength that God has given to me, a gift that He intends for me to use it to capacity. Um, It has taken me to many different parts of the world, particularly uh, in this region around us. I have seen God do incredible, tremendous work uh, penetrating into communities that are hardened to the gospel, uh, that resist the message of the good news that Jesus Christ is Savior, Healer, and Deliverer. And by signs and wonders and miracles, we've seen these places broken open and people come into the kingdom, churches being planted, and there is followers of Jesus Christ today who in turn go on and serve the Lord. Uh, it's been very fulfilling. Uh, and yet it creates a deeper and deeper hunger in me to see more that needs to be done. The harvest is plentiful. Uh, The needs are increasingly more and more around us. Um, And out of that hunger, of course, um, I'm a son of the land, Malaysia. And of course, uh, I continuously pray and uh, seek God and said, Lord, when is it going to be our turn? Uh, When will you move in a mighty way in Malaysia? Will we see a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, will the church rise in these last days and we will be mighty in God, doing great and mighty works that Jesus commanded us to do. Um, I, I And out of that hunger, uh, we continue in the ways that the Lord will lead us by way of, for example, the School of Acts, believing not just in uh, additions coming into the kingdom, but multiplication. Uh, just like D.L. Moody once said, um, I would rather have 10 men do the work than to do the work of 10 men. Right. And so, uh, uh, the training, equipping, and for all these 23 years, partnering with the body of Christ through training and equipping by way of the School of Acts. Again, we've seen so many, many, over a thousand, maybe about 1,300 some graduates that are serving God in 38 nations around the world and majority of them of course in our own country Malaysia it's incredible they're spread across every denomination and in multiplied churches serving God in different places positions and so we're thankful to God 
then going into uh, the reaching uh, into our country, as I've done all these years in many different nations by way of mass miracle rallies. Of course, uh, you know, just like when you remember the time in Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus first heard that John the Baptist has been beheaded, um, he began to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And he says that the gospel of the kingdom was repent, for the kingdom of God is near. And you look at the chapter before in Matthew 3, where Jesus, uh, where the Bible says, John the Baptist preached everywhere. What was the message? The message was repent, the kingdom of God is near. It, it is the same message. Jesus showed us what is the message we preach. We have different messages being heard in the marketplace today, uh, gospel that comes in uh, different ways and different uh, approaches and whatsoever it is. But the content must be the same. Uh, there is only one way that people can come into the kingdom, and that is when we say we're wrong, God is right. We need to make things right. We need to surrender our lives to God. Repentance is 180 degrees turn from where one was to where one needs to be with God. And so that message must be preached. But that message is very dry. Mm. That message is very difficult to be accepted. In current times. Yes. yes. As hard as it is yes. to preach, yes. harder it is for someone to accept. Yes. Why? Am I, uh, you, you are telling me that I'm wrong. You're telling me that uh, I, I, I need to admit that I am a sinner. No way. I, I, I can't do that. So that message is dry and it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go nowhere. But you see then in that same chapter of Matthew chapter 4, Jesus went everywhere preaching the same message. Right. It is going to come across the same. But as he preached the gospel of the kingdom, he manifests the gospel. And that is when chapter 4, going down to the verses after that, it shows that he went everywhere. People brought him those that are diseased, those that are sick, and he healed them all. And he, when people came that were oppressed of devils, that were lunatics, because uh, it was the work of the demonic on their lives, and Jesus set them all free. So you find that that brings excitement, that brings an openness. In fact, that actually brings a God encounter. That brings people into the realm of God. God is supernatural. And in God's realm, the supernatural breaks out. We're talking about miracles here. Miracles. So when we come back, we talk more with uh, Reverend Raymond Mui about uh, miracles uh, that God has uh, brought upon, um, that encounter that we can feel and understand and, and see God manifest in, in great ways. Rima, radio. Hello everyone. Do you have a heart to reach the Orang Asli of Malaysia? Maybe you'd like to minister to them and be a blessing to their lives. Well, if you'd like to, visit us at www.1vm.net. That's One Voice Ministries. Hi, this is Winnie Ho from Starbuck Home Artist. And one of my favorite verses from the Bible will be John 15, 5. I'm the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Hi, did God do something great in your life today? Or do you have a God story you want to tell someone? Send us your story at Christianity Malaysia. That's right. The story you share might just be the word that someone out there needs to hear. Email to editor at christianitymalaysia.com Rayma Radio this is Ray Poon speaking to you on Rayma Radio, the weekly podcast on faith, culture, music and more. Uh, just before the break, we've been talking to uh, Reverend Raymond Mui on the need for Christians to understand that there is a sense of great urgency in these end times to really embrace God's blessing and also God's call to open fields. So, 
Reverend, tell us a little bit more about your experience and and your uh, perspective of God's work in the current times. And miracles is not something that uh, just needs to happen in the old days of where Jesus was alive. We're talking about the fact that miracles happen every day in every situation of, that we go through. You are exactly right. God is a supernatural God. And we, we are natural beings, earthly beings. And everything that we do is a product of man. What we can do is so much earthly. God is not natural. He is supernatural. And so he goes beyond what man can do. When man stops, God continues. And if God is so real as he wants to be in every one of our lives, and if it is true that God is with us, then we've come into a higher dimension and added to us when we came into the kingdom of God is God a God dimension. And so if we have now the divine nature of God, then we have the capability of going beyond what is impossible, what we cannot do anymore. Then God steps in all. We actually step into God's realm and see the impossible becomes possible. So therefore, when we talk about the miracle working God, it is obviously more than just healing of a sick person. It, is, it includes the healing of the sick, but it involves every area of our human life. Uh, just like the Bible says that um, whether we are wise or we are foolish, we all face the storms of life, that, like the parable uh, Jesus gave in Matthew chapter 7. Um, you, you can be the wisest man in town, the storms will surely come. And so the Bible tells us to weatherproof our lives. Mm. Not that we will then be free from storms. Then we can resist storms or we get a different outcome when a storm comes. And that storm can come by way of obstacles, hindrances, roadblocks, things that uh, stand in our way. Yeah. Sure. Mm. Mm. And uh, mountains like Jesus described mm. that stands in front of us, we cannot cross over the other side, then what do we do? And so uh, Jesus said about the wise man that he builds his house on a rock. And uh, what Jesus is talking about is, yes, he's talking about himself standing on the foundation, that sure foundation of Jesus Christ. But he also speaks about the word, how important it is, because he, he began the parable saying that, Two men came to hear him and took away his words or his instructions of life. And they went on to build their lives. And it is what their lives is built upon. One was one built upon the sand, which he refers to as foolish, and it was utterly destroyed. The other built his house upon the rock and he stood firm when the winds blew and the storm came. So the word is so important. And when we say, uh, we believe. What do we believe? Uh, God is invisible, like the book of Timothy says, that uh, he is invisible, the mighty God, the omnipotent God, the invisible God. But yet he is uh, the God who is the greatest of all, and he's the mighty God. Uh, he's sovereign. Um, and yet God, being invisible, he makes himself visible by how he manifests himself. And just the same way as we cannot see God, but we have the word of God. So we believe, we believe what he says. And so everything about the Christian faith rests upon believing or having faith in his word. And so when we look into the Bible, which is really the written word of God, which is the written voice of God, which is God's mind in writing, which is God's instruction for life to those who believe and follow him. So in his word, he tells us about what he promises us. He tells us about what we will need to use when we have a problem, when we are in trouble, when, so to say, we need God to show up. 
So that's when a miracle is about to happen. So it goes straight back again, what we lack that causes us to have so little faith mm. that end up us seeing hardly any miracles in life. Yeah, so Reverend, you're absolutely uh, you know, on the ball when you're saying about how Christians ought to be viewing life and God's blessing with spiritual eyes and not look at our own eyes and to have faith because that's yes. really that compass that leads us uh, you know, forward. You know, yes. uh, with with energy, with purpose, with uh, confidence as well. Mm. When we come back, we talk more a little bit about your experience in the field, your experience uh, uh, when you are conducting mega rallies yes. and how God works there. Yes, thank you. Yeah, this is Rema Radio. You've been listening on Rema Radio, the weekly podcast of faith, culture, music, and more. Rema Radio. My name is Ashley Lowe from Adams Road Presbyterian Church in Singapore. I'd like to say this prayer to all the people who listen, who are walking a journey, battling cancer, caregiver who are taking care of them, who find running into exhaustion, not knowing where to go. And this is a prayer for you, dear Lord. I want to give you thanks, praise you, Lord, for your awesomeness, for your majestic creation that you have created for us. Lord, I want to lift up the people who are walking this journey of battling cancer to you, because Lord, you know what are they going through. As a caregiver myself, walking this journey of 18 years, walking with my husband, Tony, Lord, you have shown me so many ways and you have allowed me to draw strength from you so many ways Lord I want to lift them all to you as they listen over the air the radio that Lord open their hearts open their hearts to receive your words word of the living God can heal the impossible Lord I thank you I want to declare and proclaim your word Isaiah 43 this morning over all these people who walk this journey thinking they are alone I want to pray that Lord the same word you have given me and Tony the same word you have given me hope I proclaim and declare your words because you will be walking in front of them when they pass through the waters they will not be stripped over by water when they walk through fire, they will not be able to be burned and consumed by the fire. Because Lord God, you are with them. You are carrying them every step of the way. No matter how challenges the journey can be, how painful the journey can be. But Lord, I lifted them all to you. Lifted them all their burden to you and cast all their burden upon you. And only through you, Lord, you will carry them through the fire and the furnace without being consumed by the fire. Only through you, Lord God, you will carry them through the rivers without drowned in the river. And I pray for strength, Lord, for the caregivers. As they listen, they will draw strength from you. For those who doesn't know you, Lord, encounter them. Encounter them. Let them experience you. Experience your fragrance experience your peace, experience your love. For those who are walking pain with cancer, surrender all to the Lord. Because the same journey my husband has walked for 18 years, Lord, I pray the same anointing, the same anointing of healing upon them, that only through your blood of Jesus, that you have died on the cross, you have redeemed all their sins, and you will exchange a new life for them. And I thank you, Lord, for your anointing. I thank you, Lord God, for your power. I thank you, Lord God, for your blood of Jesus. And I pray for a seal of protection over their family. Even with this walk of journey in the darkness, Lord, only you can bring light. Your word of God will shine upon their path. Your light will shine so bright, Lord, 
they will know that each step of the way, they are walking towards you. And your living words will heal them day by day as they listen to your words. And I pray all that in your mighty Jesus' name. Amen. Rayma Radio. This is Rayma Radio, the weekly podcast of faith, culture, music and more. Just before the break, we have been listening to Reverend Raymond Mui, who shares about the importance of why Christians ought to view God's blessings and God's direction and God's purpose in our lives with spiritual eyes and have faith in what we do. We'd like to talk more with uh, Reverend Raymond now about his experience in the open fields when he conducts uh, uh, evangelistic rallies and how God in itself uh, works in great and miraculous ways. Can you share more about some experiences? Sure. Um, it's just like what I said in the last segment. No one is exempted from practicing the Word of God. Neither is any, anyone that is excluded from practicing the Word of God. Uh, and so that includes myself or anybody. When I get out on the field, just like anybody else, I need to see miracles. I need to see God show up uh, from the onset of preparing for the event, like um, when we go into a particular area that uh, we feel God leading us to, impress upon our hearts that this is the place of need and the time is now for us to step in and bring into the kingdom a harvest. Um, we pray. We pray for God to give us favor and connect us with the like-minded people and people who share the same burden with us for souls. And God will uh, bring together pastors, leaders, because at the end of the day, it is not just about who has responded to the order call. It is how much we have harnessed from those that have accepted Christ that we will, end, we will see them end up becoming true followers of Christ. And so um, we need God's favor. We pray for miracles. And then, of course, from getting the venues, the approvals or the permits to use the venues, getting the approvals from the local authorities, we will never go to a place and conduct a miracle rally unless we have all the approvals. Um, and of course, uh, matter of fact, uh, in most of those places that I have uh, uh, conducted miracle rallies in the 20 over years, uh, it's typical to see on the first night either the governor, the mayor, um, or some uh, governmental leader that will open the rally on the first uh, night of three nights. Wow. Uh, whether it is in Indonesia or in Thailand, in India, wherever it is, uh, it is uh, uh, part of my prayer list that God, you will send someone that is that represents the leadership of that community uh, that will stand in front of the people to welcome us and open the miracle rally. Yeah, that in itself is a miracle. The it approvals, is true. Their, their endorsement. It is true. Yeah. And again, it tells us that uh, people are open, their hearts are open, uh, and especially when um, what we are there to bring them yeah. is an answer to people, some people who are desperate for help. You know, when a person is sick, it, it's not just affecting one individual. When one person is sick, it affects the family, it affects the economy, it affects their livelihood, it affects their future, and even children no longer can pursue their education in many cases because the breadwinner is sick, bedridden. And what a difference it makes when that person just get up from their sick bed, healed in the name of Jesus. Mm. What a difference it makes when they no longer have to pay high medical bills. In some other settings, what a difference it makes when there is no medical help that could help someone. Somebody is terminally ill or somebody else that you know uh, doesn't have the means, ill afford medicine, doctor's appointments. What a difference it makes when a miracle happens and they are made whole in the name of Jesus. So we bring a blessing 
to those communities. We have to believe God for uh, the people that will come. Uh, that they uh, and I have always again make it a personal desire in my heart, uh, uh, and it is my conviction that we when get when we get out to those places to preach the gospel. Well, why do we need to go? Who are the people that need it most? Is people who don't know Jesus. Is people who need to come into the kingdom. So the target is them. So we believe God that the place will not be anything less than ninety percent that needs Christ. So I am not reaching the church. I am not reaching Christians. I want to reach the lost. People who need Jesus, mm. and so that is sadly um, not always the case, or mostly not the case in a lot of church outreach today, where you will find majority of the people that are present are already saved. Mm. Mm. And so I, I am very targeted. I'm very focused when I go to a place. Uh, I'm not interested in believers coming. Right. I want. People who needs this most to show up. So that's a good point, uh, Reverend. We need to talk a little bit about how Christians can prepare, you Correct. know, for, for for rallies and how they can get involved in rallies. Yes. So when we come back from this break, uh, I'd like to tap your your insights as well. How we as Christians can get involved more. Yes. You have been listening to Rema Radio, the weekly podcast on faith, culture, music, and more. We've been listening to Reverend Raymond Mui, who's been sharing with us about God's miracle and His incredible, amazing works that manifest so that we can take our spiritual encounter to the next level. Uh, so as Christians, Reverend, how can we get involved uh, in rallies? One is we ourselves must realize that um, we're not out there just to sell something. Yeah. We're out there to give a piece of ourselves to somebody. It's life-changing because it starts with life-giving. Christ didn't come to impress us. He didn't come to persuade us. He came to give His all for us. And out of that seed that fell to the ground, it brings forth much fruit. The same way as a Christian, until and unless the church, which is everybody that is a believer, unless we come to the place where we are prepared to give our lives, we get out there to know that it is something that is from us that we share with somebody, then it is a hard job. It is nearly impossible to persuade somebody to go and share the gospel. And as someone who now realizes that as we have been given so we freely give. We must then first realize that winning a soul into the kingdom is not winning an argument. It is not the power of persuasion. Mm. Winning a soul, the soul itself is spiritual. It is not just a mental assent or knowledge, information exchange. Mm. It is spiritual. That soul has been held by the hand of someone else, more powerful than all of us. His name is Satan. And the only one that could deliver a soul from the hands of Satan is Jesus Christ. And so therefore, we need the power of God. A believer must prepare by praying, praying that God will equip him, God will make him a soul winner. Just like Jesus said to the apostles, come follow me, I will make you. you. You're not born that way. I will make you. There is a process. I will make you a fisher of men. That we have to first experience God for ourselves. That we have to go past the Bible teaching, Bible study, the Sunday school teaching. We have to go past the hearing of a sermon. We have to internalize that, yes, this is my Savior, Jesus. He really can save a soul, translating us from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. 
coming to the realization of that, then we know we can't. Only God can. So we must pray. Pray for ourselves that we ourselves will be transformed to become a soul winner. We must pray for the soul. Every soul, we must cry out to God. We must ask God that we will have souls won into the kingdom. And when we pray for the souls, then there will be a dismantling in the realm of the spirit. And that's where the supernatural is taking place. A dismantling of strongholds, of things that are holding them back. And then when that soul is set free, released, the coming into the kingdom will not be just a name in the church register. It will be a true name written in the book of life. So we have to pray for the soul. And praying for the soul may involve spiritual warfare, bringing down the strongholds of whatever that they have invoked into their lives to control them. Whatever it is that they have called upon to themselves that gives those powers license to have rights over their lives. Those things must be cancelled, broken. Then that soul can be free to fall into the hand of God. So it is spiritual. It must also come from a heart of a believer that love souls, passion for souls. That is what I will say that the church needs to catch today. The church in Malaysia has been so consumed with ourselves, mm. uh, with the latest strategy of church growth. Mm. We've been consumed with activities and what uh, keeps a church member coming, why to my church, why not to another church, uh, and how that we can retain the interests of somebody. So we are very broad in covering subjects of interest and uh, activities and so forth. And, uh, and, and we didn't realize that uh, when we get out to do outreach or when we have a program and says, oh, this is an outreach, this is bringing someone to come to our church to hear the gospel, it is not adding a member into your church. It is adding a soul into the kingdom of God. God sees it differently. We must see it from God's point of view. Then we will become very effective. Mm. Then there is hope in Malaysia that people will find eternal life. We've got to realize that, that the, 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 just like the book of Romans says, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. That means it is not how uh, fluent we are or it is not how persuasive we are. It is not how well we string our sentences. It's not how we have mastered the four gos- uh, the, 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 uh, the, the gospel laws or whatever you. It is really the gospel itself has enough power. You don't have to add to it. The gospel is powerful enough. If you know where the keys are, you know it is all about God and it is you that takes the right position and the right attitude of mind, the right perspective that it is serious business. It is truly a spiritual encounter that the soul needs, that they need to meet Jesus Christ. Then you see a life transformed. A passion for souls. Amen. You, you need that passion. Thank you, Reverend. Certainly. You've been listening to Ray Poon on Rema Radio, and we've been speaking to Reverend Raymond Mui, who's been sharing with us that the spiritual encounter of God, of what God wants for us, and how we as Christians not only need to exercise our authority, but we need to practice our faith and have passions for lost souls. And in that way, we can be involved in bringing that spiritual encounter to non-believers as well. You've been listening to Rema Radio, the weekly podcast on faith, culture, music and more. Holy is the Lord, as the trembling of worship.
appreciates the heavenly gifts. So let us join heaven in the house of God. Let us sing praise to the Lord. One and only shout to the King of Kings, O glorious. Mm-hmm. Great is the Lord, most worthy of praise. Great is our King, enthroned in all His splendor. Marvelous You are, my King. Sovereign Lord, you are Supreme Your countenance glow in glorious splendor Unfathomable, your radiance like glowing battle of fire Like the of your glory, your resounding voice as thunder Shades the heavens and earth So let us join heaven in the house of God let us sing praise to the Lord, born and only shout to the King of Kings, O oh glory. Great is the Lord, most worthy of praise. Great is our King, controlled in all His splendor. Marvelous You are, my King. Music by Patrick Leong. Today's episode is recorded, edited, and mixed by Moses Chan at Prodio Studio. If you have not heard this week's word, catch Pastor Chris Lam in our midweek service with a sermon entitled Core Habits 3. Be real. Have a real week with God ahead. God bless. Rayma Radio is a non profit initiative by the Love Malaysia Media Project. Time, talent, and treasure is put into creating the content you listen to. Your support enables us to keep this going and expand further. Log on to www.raymarad.io slash support to find out how you can partner with us in creating value-adding content that ministers to the masses. Once again, that's www.raymarad.io slash support. Let's get the word out there. I found it on Rima Radio.